Maybe next one. Okay. Huh. Where did it go? Quick, hurry up or do you have to hear another bad joke? <laughs> <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell. I have, a, I have like a four part. Oh, oh okay. no. It's a tongue here. No, don't worry. I can like. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Uh, I'd just like to give a disclaimer at start. You'll see a lot of Google related stuff, but. It's no way sponsored by Google. It's just some of the texts I've used in this. Okay, so I'll talk about how I used Google Home, which comes in with Google Assistant, to uh, control my aircon. So I can just talk to it and just tell it to switch on my aircon or just change the temperature. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, so the inspiration behind this, I went to Google I.O. this year and then when they talked about Google Assistant, they had this really cool demo where they had a mocktail mixer. So you could like, they had this device set up, you could talk to it and just ask it to create a mocktail for you. And this is what it looked like. They had four, five cylinders on top, which they had drinks coming out. So you could tell it, I want this thing and it will just pour it out for you. So this along with the fact that I've been wanting to learn how to hack around with the Raspberry Pi for like a couple of years. I just had it but never got around to using it. So this kick started everything. And then, so I just go briefly run through the boring part essentially just to get you up to track. Google Assistant is just a conversation platform provided by Google. You can actually just, it, it's on your iPhone, it's on your Android, it's on Google Assistant, it's, uh, it's on Google Home, it's coming out on washing machines, whatever. And Similar to like building apps, you can build apps for Google Assistant using actions on Google, which is just like an SDK. So as I said, I used a Google Home for this project. Then the good thing about this is like, like if anybody of you has worked on chatbots, it's extremely similar, just that instead of text now you've got voice, but the core technology and the core concepts is entirely the same. So for me, I used API.ai, uh, it's another, uh, Google sponsored project, but nowhere, I'm not nowhere related to them. I just use them to convert voice to text, pull out actions. Like if I say, uh, switch on the lights, the, the action is like switch on, and then there's a, there's a part you need to understand, which is lights, so what I'm understanding. So that's what API.ai helps you. And then you build a webhook, which is like, it understands what you want, it sends it to your server, your webhook, you process what you want to do, return back the response and then it will just uh, speak it out through the Google Assistant. Okay, so here's the part here. Because every, anything you say to Google Assistant or the Google Home in this scenario, it's going to be processed on API, uh, on Google, going to be passed to API.ai and then they'll need somebody to re react to that. And that's where the Raspberry Pi comes in. Uh, but again, because this is all in the cloud, your Raspberry Pi needs to be able to talk to it. So you cannot just basically let it run on your web server local. Like it cannot be local. It needs to be connected to the internet. So what I did is something entirely very basic, not something recommended. You can't really use this to like host a website. So simply you just install Flask, which is just a Python server, it's bare bones, it can do one request at a time, so it's not multi-user, it crashes so often, <laughs> it's not really that secure, and, it, and I would like really like to highlight that it's really difficult to set up, there's an entire guide available online and post the links, eventually that was the only thing which got it to work for me. Okay, so now is, I would say the most interesting part, which is how do you reverse engineer an aircon remote? Because nobody's going to provide you, like, you can't go to your aircon manufacturer and be like, hey, can you tell me what signals you're sending? So you really need to, sorry? sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So first thing, uh, what you need to do is, well, first I'll go through the basics of what an aircon remote is. So I'm not really uh, sure about what other remotes are like. The aircon remote essentially blasts the entire signals off, like it's on, off, everything going on at the same time. There's no up or down temperatures which are, which are going. And 
there's a Python library called LIRC, which is then used to, which you can use to blast off uh, infrared commands to any receiver out there. So essentially, you just need to set that up on your Python. Uh, again, there's an entire tutorial available on LRIC's website on how you do it. And then, so you set up a receiver on Raspberry Pi, you pl play your remote on it, and you'll see something like this. Space is essentially the amount of time in microseconds the receiver was quiet, and then the pulse is whatever it hit. All gibberish right now, you need to pass it through an IR record command, which will then convert this into a state. Information comes something like a, well, I'll need another 45 seconds, I guess. That's okay. It converts it into some kind of uh, config file for you. So essentially what you're doing is you're recording whatever the remote is sending and then you're going to replay that back using an IR blaster. So LRIC is just a mechanism to convert those waveform signals into something code will understand and then just replay that back. So essentially this is what you'll do. You'll set up your IR blaster that's in my room. I couldn't bring it over. And then you just blast those signals back again. So now, since you have everything set up, normal tips, we can probably go through this later if you have any questions about some, how the debugging went about through all of this. You put it all together, essentially you talk to Google Home, goes to the cloud, comes back to your Raspberry Pi through, a, through the fulfillment engine, fires off the IR blaster to the aircon, and then responds back by saying you're done. Yep, that's about it. I have a video, let's see if it loads. Yeah. <laughs> This is just a 20 second clip of how it works in my room. I hope the audio works. Hey. Okay, Google. Talk to Lord Commander. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get the test version of Lord Commander. Greetings, fellow member of the Night's Watch. <laughs> hey, please switch on my aircon. <laughs> Trying to switch on your aircon. So you can see the uh, there's a light which lights up. And the aircon <laughs> is turning on. Yeah, that's about it. Yep. That's it. If you have any questions. Sure. So, your current uh, can only just turn on and off the aircon? Uh, turn on, turn off, increase temperature, not decrease it. <laughs> <laughs> So I set it to like 20 degrees whenever I switch it on because <laughs> it's unlike a remote, there's no memory in the Raspberry Pi as of now. So would this work with TVs too? Yes, ideally you just need, it would work with any remote which uh, uses infrared to communicate, like that's essentially every remote out there. You just need to be able to uh, decode what the signals se being sent are. Um, I, I was really, uh, someone was telling me recently about this really cool um, like Android app that essentially sends out IR codes for off for like every TV out there. So basically like a TV killing device. Uh, so I know you can buy those like with the thing, but like... A universal you, remote. Yeah, yeah, universal TV off remote. So could you make something like that using your... Um, I think mean, like, you know, make it pocketable so that you can actually like pocket your <laughs> TV off. I think... Okay, this cannot be carried in your pocket, but I used to use one app on my phone as well uh, to control air cons and television sets. But I think recently, Android has a lot of new phones don't have the IR blaster anymore, so no choice anymore. Well, yeah, that should no, be possible. You can, you can like, that's when I say you can have a separate device that you can carry around. You know, the IR blaster and. Uh, it, it should actually be possible. Also, because another thing I would like to highlight, the entire reverse engineering process, I went through it spe specially because the remote I had. So the LRIC community actually maintains an open source project and where they've reverse engineered a lot of remotes. Like you even have like Starhub TV remotes and Singtel TV remotes out there, but they didn't have the my aircon model. So I had to go through the reverse engineering process, but you could just get it off from there and then just replay. So like most of the, the comparatively difficult part is anyways done for you. Yeah. So did you actually recover the structure of the command? Like, can you send out an IR command for any per, any, any you know, temperature setting, any fan setting, or did you just record the three? Or no, two? you. Uh, so what I realized, right? I've not gone into specific details. I just had a basic idea about what it looks like. So what I realized is 16 bits. The first seven is just a static header, and the last one is a checksum. And then the first one, so the eighth one becomes your power on off. 
if I remember clearly, the next four represents the more, then it's the fan speed, and then it's the temperature. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one more setting in my uh, the economy or the super high mode. So that's one of them. So you can essentially now rearrange them in any order and just send it out for you. So, you, so recording just helps you decipher that information to begin with. Mm -hmm. Question: Why can it go up and not go down? Because I haven't said that. Com I didn't like. I haven't written that command yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the only thing. I mean, it's not like it's much more difficult. I have just not written it yet. Sorry, did you say that high needs to be connected to the external internet so that you can receive the web hook? Correct, because Google Home is connected to my whole house Wi-Fi, right? So when it sends to API.ai, API.ai actually needs a actually needs a URL to which it could send your the JSON to. Now that needs to be on the internet, right? Can't be on your local web server. You won't get it. Yeah. Okay, right. cool. Uh, we are at time. This is for later. Um, you'll be hanging around.